lighting in this garage is terrible. <laughs> right, so welcome back to another video, welcome back to the channel, thanks for coming back. So, my last video, a bit pessimistic, The I was trying to do the Mercedes wiring on the uh, on the wing mirror. Wasn't really going too well, to be honest. Um, but now I have picked up a new one, like I mentioned at the end of the video. Uh, so, I've got that here. Let's crack on, get it on the car. Alright, so here we've got the old mirror, so I'm just going to take the casing off and then we can, there's like a little plus, uh, a little metal tab inside of there and it's right down on this side, uh, you might not be able to see it on the camera, you probably won't, but in there, uh, between, on the outside of the frame, there's like a little tab, you just depress it with like a solid screwdriver and then it releases the case, so I'm going to take that off and then just take the bits that I need off for the new mirror which is here, so we'll look at that in a sec. I think this is a specific screwdriver that I always use. Big long flathead, I'm sure it's this one. <laughs> I've done this that many times. So you pull the tab in. That should. Probably easier to have done this on the car, to be honest. Uh, but there we, go. there we go. So you've got the housing separated from the cover, I guess. Uh, so. Let's have a look at the new one. So I called the Mercedes parts department, uh, my local place, um, gave them reg number and yeah, this is what they gave us. So, it actually comes with a new mirror motor as well, which is kind of good. I mean, you feel like you're getting, these are like 40 quid brand new for like eBay ones, so you feel like you're getting something for your £280 at least. That's already plugged in. These are for the uh, mirror heating elements, so just going on the back and then I've got all that's the wiring for the motor and then these just plug into the car so looks like everything's there so it should just be plug and play gives you some new screws but again i'm not really sure what size bit they are so you can get them out like what is like what is this a little security bit all right this is a macro lens so it should focus on this should kind of so it's like a hex bit with a security point in the middle um, so you meant to, I've got bits that do have this sort of configuration, just can't seem to find one this size, which is mega annoying. Uh, but I'll have a go with the new ones, maybe it was just the old ones were a bit knackered. I'll have a go with the new ones, uh, if not I'll just put, I've got some other bolts that'll work so. Um, right, let's take these screws out. So I need to put the mirror glass on there. Um, it's a real weird system for taking this mirror glass off. You've got like a pin here and it kind of just weaves through and, and you literally just Weave it and the glass comes off. <laughs> so it's a bit odd. And then you've got your heating elements, but whatever. It works. So I am going to test before I put this cover back on. This is an old um, indicator. So originally, when the indicator started playing up, I thought it was just the indicator because I mean, it's LED, it does fail after 165,000 miles and you know, however many years. So I got a new one of these. And it actually came with like, there's a lot of the E-classes where they have a little mirror here, a little window here which allows a light out and it came with like a little side light holder which obviously I didn't have a place for on this. And it worked, but if I can put this old one back in it works, you've got a bit more room in there and it's a bit more OEM and a bit more how it should be. So I'm going to take this out, there's just two uh, flathead screws there, uh, two Phillips screws there. Take that out and just plug it into the outside of that when that's plugged in, just make sure it works. So what I'm going to do first is, I'm going to take you in there. There's a load of residue left on the mirror uh, from, I put masking tape, I put gaffer tape on to cover up the actual holes but then I put masking tape underneath so that it wouldn't, uh, so that it wouldn't damage the paint but then it rained because it's England so it's left a bit of residue so I'm just going to clean it up with uh, a microfiber and some uh, like sticky remover, some tarn glue remover, uh, depending on what I've got around so <laughs> let's get that sorted, let's sort of clean it up. Alright, that was a bollock. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, there's still a tiny little bit of residue um, and I might have inflicted some like little scuffs in there maybe with, uh, you can't really see it with silver, but maybe you know when I've been rubbing at it and using my fingernail, <laughs> which you shouldn't do, but it's kind of solidified, it's gone real annoying. Um, what I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit of polish on here, uh, just some polish and just rub out all around here, just get it back looking nice and fresh. 
using a bit of the good old Meguiar's M205. It's a uh, finishing polish so it isn't too aggressive, but it'll be perfect just for getting the little bits and bobs off there. So just a tiny bit. Eight hours later. All right, cool, that area's clean. So let's uh, bring the new mirror over and test fit it, see if it works. All right, so I just tested the, I've literally got it, <laughs> got the indicator on, just really loose, like I said. Um, just slips on like that as part of the main housing and it works so yeah what I'm going to do is this is already clean obviously just put that out of the way a sec um, just going to clean all this up it's a bit dirty and then clean up the back of the housing since this is the last time it's going to be coming off in a while fingers crossed so uh, yeah just clean this up with a bit of all peps cleaner old mic rider real old rag in fact I've just found one here well, let's use that I'm not messing up uh, a nice mic rider All right, it's not perfect in there, but it's a lot better. So let's put this indicator back in. It just pops in real weirdly, like... You go in from this side, put it in there, and then it clips down and into there, and then there's two screws there. All right, it's in there. Boom. So, right, so that's that. So let's go put it all back on the car and put this to bed <laughs> once and for all. So feed these through. You can do it with the door card off, which uh, with the door card off, which makes it access a little bit easier. But honestly, I won't really worry about it. All right, so that's on. That's on. Take that off. So I just put the new. I put that old housing back on, fold it out. There we go. And that's now on place. Finally, look at that, no warning on the dash, no, uh, it was going tick, 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 tick before, because that bulb was out, or wasn't working anyway, uh, so that works, um, so yeah, that works, great success, so, <laughs> what an ordeal, so what, if anything, have I learned from this, uh, <laughs> I learnt that, really, if it's complex wiring, probably better to just get a new loom. I thought it was going to be a ball lake. It was. cost 280 quid. Not, not a ridiculous amount of money, but, you know, if you can avoid spending it, you're going to avoid spending it. It's my mum's car, you know, I'd, I'd rather she didn't spend the money. I'd rather be able to fix it for her. Um, yeah, so, pretty annoying. Um, Mercedes were pretty good about the whole thing. So, I used, to, I used to work at the local Mercedes dealership a while back, a couple of years ago, five, six years ago, maybe. Maybe about, I don't know, something like that, a couple of years ago. Um, and they were pretty good. Anyway, so I rang them up, told them what it was, ordered it, paid to the centre. It was quite cool, sent a, a link. He sent me an email with a link on it. And you just click on it and enter your card details and it shows you what you're paying for and gives you an invoice. And then it automatically emails you a sales invoice and like an order confirmation and, and receipt and all that. Uh, quite secure, quite good, um, easy to use. Especially because I've got autofill and everything, so it was just, yep. And then I ordered that on a Friday, and then the part was here today, which is a Tuesday. So it was here this morning. It was actually going to post it out to me, but I rang him and said, can I come collect it? Um, you know, I'd adhere to the social distancing and all that. So, yeah, that's that's fine. I was not able to do that, and I've got it in the same day, and it's working. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty happy about that. So quite a pessimistic end to the last video, but pretty optimistic end to this video. <laughs> the only thing that's up with this now is very occasionally it says convenience battery not working or something. So I did that before and it was the original battery. So there's a main battery for the engine and then there's like a convenience battery for all the electronics. I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's the E-Class in general of this era or whether this one has like loads of options, like it's got TV in the back. Uh, so I don't know if it's all that. 
so yeah, it, it was saying it won't work in. So we got a brand new battery, 100 quid, put it in. It was fine for ages. Now occasionally it'll come on saying convenience, battery function's not working. So it won't let you put like the heated seats on, uh, which isn't obviously a problem at this point. Um, for once. <laughs> but it won't let you do other little bits and bobs. But then after about a minute or two, it, it, it works again. So I'm not really sure what's going on on that. I don't know if it's just because the car's been sat for a while with lockdown, obviously, and it's like gone past... Uh, uh, you know, and it's gone down from peak voltage. You have to be like 100% on these batteries, otherwise they just don't work. Um, but I don't think it's doing it now. Let me try it. Let's see if we can put the heat seats on. It's working. It's working now. Uh, I don't know. I did take it for a run to the Mercedes dealership and give it a good blast on the way. So I don't know if maybe, like I say, it's just it's just not. Oh, when steering wheel's going up. <laughs> I don't know if it was maybe just low on juice and and this has charged it up a good run out. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that, and if it comes back, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try and fix it. Um, see what, see what it is. Do a bit of googling and all that, and I'll keep you guys updated with that, just in case any of you are actually interested. So yeah, ending this video on a positive note. Um, in my, in my video before the Mercedes video, the Passat thermostat, um, I think I got shared on like one of the PD one thirty groups, and I got loads of views on that, and I actually got like. And it's not a lot. I think I got like 10 more subscribers or something, which for me is like a massive jump. That was in like space of a couple of hours. And I was like, wow. So it'd be really good if this video has helped you out at all, or you find it interesting, or if you're enjoying the channel. Uh, there is more content to be coming. I'm hoping to potentially be getting rid of the Passat in a couple of months for something a bit different. I don't think I've seen many of them on YouTube. I don't think I've seen any of them being like played with or covered in great depth. Might be a reason for that. It's usually, <laughs> when something isn't popular, there's, there's usually quite a good reason for, reason for it. Uh, but it's something interesting. Um, something that maybe you wouldn't have expected after these videos and me, uh, you know, bashing cars and stuff. But uh, but yeah, so stay tuned if you're intrigued for that. And do please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.